Hi, how's it going? This is going to be super quick. I don't even know if this will be useful, but if this helps one person, then mission completed. So I am currently working on a game framework. It's basically a library of code for making games with a bunch of examples and tutorials that I can just sort of package off and say, there we go, make stuff. Um, and it's data oriented. Now, one of the problems with making a game framework and making it data oriented is I have to do a lot of development up front before I even see anything on the screen. And then there's almost a 100% guarantee that the moment I click play, the thing's going to error out and I need to debug it. Now, I have a crutch that I've been relying on, which is printing things out to the console. And that's sort of a weakness of mine that I've been relying on that. And I just want to show how useful VS Code's debugging tools are. Like I said, this might be like a, a silly video, it's very obvious, but I'll just go through it. So let me just run through this scenario. I am going to go ahead and create four cubes, and then I'm going to go ahead and create eight lights down here. Now, currently I've got this set up so that it prints out the, the raw data of my batches. Now, that's my instances. I'll just run this and we'll see what that is. There we go, okay. So the way we can interpret this, because this is data oriented and all dealing with arrays, is we have base instance zero for the cube and then an instance count of four. And then the light instance has been shifted along. So the light is gonna have a base instance of four and a count of eight. Okay, and this is fine, but if I'm going to print out everything in this manner, it's not so good. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna click over here to the side to make a breakpoint, and then I'm going to go to my main file, and up here I'd click to run, but I'll just go down and say debug. And this runs along until it gets to that breakpoint. Let's move that out of the way. Until it gets to the breakpoint, at which point it will pause. Okay, so we also have this debug window, which is open here. We have our local variables. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Not so useful. That's fine. It's just a little weird. Okay, so. Now I'm going to do the same thing as I was doing before. So I'm gonna inspect some variables and this is all scoped to where we are in the code right now. So if I want to look at say, take this down. Yeah, let's look at my batches. So I'll add an expression to watch and that will be self batches, hit enter. We can see, yeah, that's a some sort of buffer object. We can look inside that and look at its host memory and verify that it is what we expect. Now, the really cool thing about this is, let me just get rid of that. So let's say I want transforms, velocities. I'll just do a few of these. Who knows, who cares? The point is I can just say, hey, these are all of the, like the, the state of the app that I want to monitor. And yeah, I can sort of, I can sort of click in here and inspect things. And that's all great. That's all great. But also the cooler thing is I can stop debugging and then debug again. And all of those objects are recalled. So I can, instead of having my, instead of having all my print statements and then commenting them out, I can simply add my watch statements, run this thing. If I don't want to see that, just run it regularly. And just so that this really sinks in, let's go ahead and create a, a breakpoint here, right before we really do anything. And then go and debug. Okay, so let's step through this one bit at a time. So 
I'm at this point here where I define, you know, my positions for my first cube. So I'll go step over, we get local variable and so on and so on, making the Eulers for the cube, the cubes angular velocity. Okay. And then at this point, we're going to make a cube. So there we are ready to make a cube. Done. Okay. So I'll, t I'll talk through this again when we do it, but um, yeah, I mean, this is, again, this is what I would expect. So we now have a transform. It is a little hard to read, but that's okay. So, I mean, every cube has eight floats associated to it. And every time we resize, we're doubling the size of the array. So yeah, we have 16 things. It's, it's what I would expect. Um, now watch this, we run through, redefine all of our variables. And now when it comes to making a cube, the first thing we do, so we say, this is the function we want to call, whoops. And we jump in here and we, um, evaluate these. So if we look, I wonder if we get this. No, we don't, Never mind. So we say, okay, evaluate that position argument, evaluate the Eulers, evaluate the angular velocity. And then we come back. Okay. We've evaluated the arguments are ready to call the function. And now what I'm going to do is before I was clicking step over, that'll just run the thing, but we can also go step into, and what that will do is actually jump into that, jump into that function and start working through that. So now we can go, okay, do your thing. Anyway, look, I just wanted to put that out there. Like I said, uh, like I said, I know this may be super obvious to some developers, but it is a massive time saver for me. And I really have been relying too much on print statements. So I just wanted to put that out there. It's probably went longer than it had to. Anyway, all the best, happy developing, and I will see you again soon. Bye.